Hi and uh, welcome to this demo of uh, Opti. Uh, first I would like to show you my setup. So uh, as you can see here I have a, a sensor or a demo board in this case uh, that are powered through the main terminal here. Uh, and as you can see uh, I also have one extra cable here and that is on this uh, demo board in the MCU, I uh, am uh, sending out UART. Uh, I have opened up a UART channel and sending out text messages. So everything that happens inside this software is being communicated and sent out through a UART. And this is what I am uh, listen to here with uh, Otty Arc. So we'll see how, how that looks like. So first, I start with a new project. So in, in uh, this uh, demo, I will show you the, the standard uh, software, the free standard software features. Uh, I will also go into the features that you that comes with the different toolboxes. But first I start with the free standard software. This is what you get when you buy uh, the unit of your arc from the distributors. So I will start then by using uh, my Autiarch as a power box with the battery toolbox. Uh, I can also emulate batteries, but with the standard software, I'm uh, able to use it as a power box. So I can set the voltage level uh, as a normal power supply. As, as you can see now, I'm limited to 3.75 volt. And that is uh, because right now I have my Auto Arc powered through USB only. So it's, it's only connected through the USB cable to my computer. And then I'm limited to 3.75 volt if I would like to measure in the highest accuracy mode. If I can uh, accept a little bit lower accuracy, I can go to current and I can disable auto range. That means that I will not switch between the different measurement ranges. I will keep to one range. So if I do like this, then I can go up to 4.2 volt with uh, my Otti Arc, the hardware connected uh, through USB. I can also use uh, a very inexpensive DC uh, adapter. To go to a higher voltage level. So if I do that, hold on here. If I go to the highest accuracy uh, in out range switching, I can go up to 4.55 volt. And if I can accept a little bit lower accuracy, I can go all the way up to 5 volt. So I would like to measure in, in the highest accuracy and also for this demo I will only use the power from my uh, USB. So back to 3.75 in maximum. I can also set it, it, my, my board here, it uses, uh, it's built for a coin cell battery so I set it to 3 volt. I can also set uh, overcurrent protection. Uh, to not burn up my device when I power it first time. Uh, in my case, if I uh, exceed 200 milliamp, something is really wrong and I should uh, turn off. So I have my setting to cut off here. That means that when I reach my overcurrent, uh, then uh, the main terminal is opened, so it's uh, not powered anymore. I can also set a current limit. That means when I reach 200 milliamp in this case, the voltage will go down to keep my uh, 200 milliamp. But I would like to cut off if uh, something is wrong. On my uh, expansion port, this is what I call the expansion port. It's the pin header here with uh, some different functionalities. Uh, the digital functions there, like the UART and digital input output, uh, I can set the voltage level for those independent of the main voltage. And uh, that is the use case here is that uh, 
Typically, I will power my board with the main terminal to the battery connector. And after the battery, I typically have a DC-DC converter uh, going into my different voltage rails. So uh, typically I might have a different voltage for my uh, digital interfaces like the MCU IOs. So then it makes it possible to set the digital voltage level independent of the main voltage level. But uh, for my demo here, uh, I can keep it, them the same. I will graph the main current consumption. Here you can see I have another uh, function. I will explain this uh, a little bit later. I will also graph the voltage level. Again, more functions explained later. And I explained about that I had this UART uh, connected. So I will enable the UART channel and I can set uh, the baud rate of my uh, device on the test. Mine sends out at 150-200. As you can see, I have a lot of selections here. So I apply this. I start the recording and turn on the power. So now you can see live the power consumption of my uh, device on the test. I can see the voltage level and also I can see the UART messages. Since I'm working as a power supply, the voltage level uh, keep uh, constant, so I will just hide that. Uh, if I click in the graph, it will stop scrolling, but you can see that I continue measuring all the time. So I can click on this follow graph to see the latest data. Uh, with my uh, scroll wheel on the mouse, I can zoom in or out of the recording. Uh, and if I hold down the Alt key of my uh, keyboard, I can zoom in Y direction. So the UI is very simple. It's very easy to see what you're looking for. I can also uh, fit with to see my whole recording. Or and I can also fit height to, to adjust for the measurement height. Let's zoom in on some interesting area. You can also see down here, you see the messages that are being sent on the UART. So if I uh, am going to analyze the power consumption of my device, I can see here, I have a lot of uh, small spikes. So I'm interested in, okay, what, what is actually happening here? So if I mark in the graph for a spike, at the same time, you can see that this part is being highlighted. So it's the message that was being sent out during this spike. So this spike is actually that the MCU woke up and it turned on the LED and went back to sleep. And this is then my TX RX burst. So let's talk a little bit about uh, accuracy. So if I uh, zoom in on uh, my lowest current consumption here, here in this top right corner, you can see the statistics for the marked interval. If I have nothing marked, it will be for the complete measurement. So let me mark here this part. So here, my device sleeps very well. So I have a roughly 600 nanoamp in sleep current. So it's really low. Uh, the accuracy of, uh, of the arc is, uh, is built for measuring all these really low sleep currents. So the accuracy is plus minus 0.1% plus 50 nanoamp. The step size is five nanoamp and I can measure all the way up to five amp. So that is, uh, the dynamics is uh, huge. Also, as you saw, uh, here I, can, I was listening to the UART messages. I can also do the opposite. So if I look for, I'm looking for a specific UART message, I can just click on it and it's being focused up here. 
if uh, your board also support uh, receiving UART messages, like if you have 80 commands implemented, then during recording, if you of course connect the TX pin of uh, the ART pin header at the expansion port to your device, you can also send your uh, 80 commands from this line and your device will then respond. So this enables to uh, test your device in different uh, states and analyze it further. So uh, to optimize your design, if you're looking at optimizing the hardware, it's all, uh, all about knowing uh, the the schematic, look into the schematic, look in uh, the data sheet and so on and optimize it uh, with respect to that, to getting a lower and lower sleep current. But to uh, optimize the software layers you add on, then this uh, correlation between the UART messages, what actually the MCU is doing together with the power graph is uh, it's very it's vital for for your uh, power optimization because then you you actually understand how the different software functions whatever the MC is doing how that affects the power consumption. So if we would like to uh, to do a comparison measurement, maybe this was the first firmware that you flashed. And uh, now we have done modifications to the firmware and flashed a new firmware or made modifications to the hardware. You would like to know uh, what difference did it make. So then you just start uh, a new recording. So as you can see, it's overlaying the old recording. Uh, and you can have as many recording here as you like. So, but to be able to compare them, they must be in time sync. So if I zoom in a little bit and mark the time difference between the two recordings, I right click, I can offset and the green one should go to the right. So now I can do a comparison measurement uh, between the different recordings and see if my modifications, how, how, how did that affect the power consumption? So let's talk more about the different functions on the expansion port. So on the expansion port, you can find two pins that says ADC plus and ADC minus. So if you have the possibility on your board to add a sense resistor, so one uh, external uh, measurement resistor on your board, you connect the high side of that uh, resistor to ADC plus and the low side to ADC minus. You just enter the value of the, the sense resistor. And then you can also measure this, uh, the current consumption through that sense resistor. So it could be a subsystem uh, of your board. So you, you, with your main terminal, you measure the main current consumption, but at the same time you can see the subsystem current consumption. So this could be your radio part or some other part that you're interested in seeing the current consumption. So this makes it possible to measure two current consumption at the same time. In the voltage tab, you can see ADC voltage. So for this subsystem you added, you, you measured, you can also measure the voltage level and that is being measured on the ADC plus pin. There is two pins, sense plus and sense minus. Uh, they can be used as two different voltage measurements from zero to five volt. So you can use them to uh, uh, monitor your different voltage rails. Maybe you would like to see the 3.3 rail or 1.8 rail or whatever you have to see that you don't get voltage drops. You would like to see the behavior of those while you do your testing. There is also two digital input pin, GPI1 and GPI2. So with these two, you can then monitor the digital state of uh, two, uh, two IOs on, on your board. So maybe you could uh, look for 
uh, triggering signals and stuff like that. So all in all, there is a lot of uh, channels being measured at the same time. There is also two digital outputs here. So with the UI here, you can uh, set the state of this digital output pin. And the last pin down here is a, a 5 volt power supply. So uh, with this you can power up some peripheral you don't, uh, that you're not interested in measuring. And the use case with the digital output pin and this 5 volt is when you go into automation. Because then you can power up a switchboard with a 5 volt pin that you control with the digital outputs and by doing that doing automatic measurements. So let's hide some of the graphs here that I'm not interested in looking at at the moment. Uh, okay, so let me also, by double clicking on the recordings, you can hide and uh, show the different recordings. So let me focus on this recording. So built into uh, Autitool, if you go to toolboxes, there is the battery life estimator. So this is a very handy tool to do a first estimate of your battery lifetime uh, to see if, if it meets the, the requirements that you have. So I can start by just adding my battery capacity. Right now uh, I will enter the uh, nominal battery capacity that I can find in the data sheet. So for example, I can have a 650 milliamp hour battery. And then I can enter the consumption. So for, with this tool I can then consumption in the active mode. So if I just mark the active part here, here is my TXRX burst, my active uh, part, and after that I more or less go to sleep. So if I click this I will get the data from this selection. And then I have my uh, consumption in idle and sleep mode, so if I just grab that. I can also edit this uh, manually. Then I can also, if I would like, to add some uh, battery self-discharge information and also the safety margin. That means that how much, if I would like to add on uh, some safety margin in my uh, calculation here, I can also set a value here. And the self-discharge I can have in percentage for uh, per day, per month or per year. So if I in this demo disregard the self-discharge and no safety margin, I can calculate my estimate. So with my 650 milliamp hour battery, in condition like this, I can uh, expect six and a half days of uh, battery lifetime. So then uh, you can start playing around with the tool. Maybe it's not uh, correct, maybe it's not right. Right now I have one uh, communication every fifth second. So if I, instead uh, letting my device sleep for a longer period, let's say that I would like to sleep for a minute instead. So, so have it 59 seconds and one second active. So one transmission every uh, minute. Then I get a battery lifetime of 2.3 months. So, I mean, uh, this is how you work with the tool. You can both get data from your graph and also uh, edit in the tool itself.